Hi, and welcome back to our channel Summaries of a Bookworm. Your number one place for all who need or like to listen to book summaries. Let's start with the book summary of today. An ancient mariner stops a man who is on his way to a wedding. The wedding guest is eager to arrive at the reception, but the ancient mariner holds him with his skinny hand and insists on telling him a story. The wedding guest is transfixed by something in the mariner's eyes, and the guest sits down and listens as the mariner tells his story. The mariner begins by stating that his ship left the harbor in calm conditions. However, a storm quickly blew in, bringing strong winds, mist, and snow. Huge emerald green icebergs floated past the ship, which was quickly encircled by ice. Eventually, an albatross flew through the fog. The crew greeted the bird in God's name, and it seemed to bring them good luck, because the ship broke through the ice safely, and a favorable wind sprang up. The wedding guest, believing the story is over, congratulates the ancient mariner on his lucky escape. The ancient mariner, on the other hand, informs the wedding guest that he shot the albatross with his crossbow. The mariner's shipmates were furious with him because they believed the albatross had brought the favorable wind with it. When the sun rose, they changed their minds, claiming that the albatross was to blame for the fog and mist, and the mariner was correct to slay it. The ship sailed along at a good clip at first, but the seas calmed down. There was no wind for days on end, and the ship remained motionless under the scorching sun. There was water all around them, but none of it was drinkable. The surrounding ocean appeared to rot, and the crew believed they were being haunted by an evil spirit. They couldn't even communicate. The rest of the crew was furious at the ancient mariner and hung the albatross around his neck to symbolize his shame. For all of the sailors, it was a weary time. Looking westward, the ancient mariner noticed something on the horizon that was no larger than a speck. The shape plunged and tacked and veered across the water until the ancient mariner realized what it was, but his mouth was too dry to speak. He bit his arm and sucked the blood out of it so he could cry out that he had seen a sail. The ship came to a halt and began to approach them. The ship was sailing toward the setting sun. The mariner noticed that the sun could be seen through the ship, as if it were a skeleton. There were only two sailors, death and life and death, and the sails were like spider webs. Death was a skeleton, and life and death was a terrifying woman with red lips, golden hair, and skin, as white as leprosy. As the ghostly ship approached, the two were playing dice, and life and death took the ancient mariner's life while death took the lives of the other sailors. The mysterious ship sailed away as night fell. Everyone on the mariner's ship died all of a sudden. There were two hundred of them, and all of their souls flew from their bodies, just as the arrow from the mariner's crossbow had flown to kill the albatross. The ancient mariner is interrupted by a wedding guest, who expresses concern that he appears unearthly and may be a ghost. The mariner assures him that he was not the only one who died. He remained on the ship alone after everyone else had died. He didn't know where to look. All he could see was the foul sea and the rotting corpses on deck. He tried to pray, but his heart became as dry as dust. He was oppressed by the presence of the dead men, who still looked at him with the same malice they had when they were alive. The mariner saw that curse in their eyes for seven days and nights, but he couldn't die because life and death had claimed him. The mariner watched the water around him burn red by moonlight and saw water snakes, blue, green, and black, flash with golden fire. The beauty of these living things struck the mariner, and he unconsciously loved and blessed them. He was able to pray as soon as he did so. The albatross dropped from the mariner's neck and drowned in the sea. The mariner could finally sleep. It was raining when he awoke, and he could drink the water. His body felt so light that he almost believed he had died in his sleep and was now a blessed ghost. He saw stars and fireballs, as well as the moon and dark clouds. The wind roared loudly but never reached the ship, however, the ship mysteriously moved. The dead men on the deck groaned and arose before returning to work and sailing the ship in silence. The wedding guest expresses his fear once more, but the mariner assures him that the corpses were possessed by angels, not the spirits of the dead sailors. He knows this because the angels sang and left the sailors' bodies at dawn. The ship sailed on, unaffected by the wind, guided by a spirit. It then came to a halt and bolted, like a pawing horse. The mariner briefly lost consciousness due to the suddenness of the motion. The mariner heard two voices in his trance. One person inquired if this was the man who had cruelly shot the albatross. The other responded, more softly, that the mariner had done his penance and would do more. The mariner describes the conversation he overheard between two voices. They claimed that the ship was sailing quickly, but that when the mariner awoke from his trance, the ship would be slow. The mariner did awaken during the night, and he was once more disturbed by the stony eyes of the corpses on deck. 
he couldn't forget their curse, couldn't look away from them, couldn't pray. The ship sailed quickly as a gust of wind blew up. The mariner was overjoyed to see his own country come into view, the lighthouse, hill, and church he recognized. When he turned away to look at the deck, he noticed an angel emitting light from each of the dead sailors' corpses. The mariner then heard oars and saw a boat with a pilot on board guiding him into the harbor. A hermit was accompanying the pilot, and the mariner immediately assumed that this holy man could absolve him of his sin. The hermit is described by the mariner as a good and pious man who enjoys conversing with sailors. The ship suddenly sank with a terrible commotion as the pilot's boat approached. The mariner was floating on the surface and ended up in the rowboat. He took up the oars and rowed until they arrived at the shore. The mariner begged the hermit for the forgiveness of his sins as soon as they arrived on dry land. He told the hermit his story, and though the mariner was in agony as he spoke, telling the story set him free. The agony, however, returns from time to time, and the mariner is forced to tell his story, just as he did to the wedding guest. Certain faces, according to the mariner, compel him to tell his story. It calms his soul to pray in church, surrounded by other people who are also praying. His final message to the wedding attendees is that a man who loves well also prays well, and he who loves best also prays best. Because God loves everything and everyone, love and prayer are inextricably linked. The mariner's revelations astound the wedding guest, who awakens the next day both sadder and wiser. Thank you for listening to our book summary. I hope we sparked your interest in the book. Please let us know in the comments below and give this video a thumbs up. Do you want to listen to more book summaries? Subscribe to us and you will get a notification every time we publish a new summary. Bye bye and see you next time.